Have you ever had to defend someone in a fight? It was in junior high school. I opened the door and stepped down the steps of the school building to discover this huge crowd gathering around. My thought? Chance to watch a good fight, only to discover that the one of the contestants was my little brother. I no longer had the privilege of watching the fight from the sideline. It was my duty to join the fight. Me, 5'2", my brother, slightly taller than I, weighing a hundred pounds soaking wet against a giant. What would you do? Defend your brother or just watch the outcome from the sidelines? What did Abraham do? We're midway through the first book of the Bible, Genesis, the book of beginnings. It is a book full of information and instructions that can help us live better, happier, healthier, more peaceful and prosperous lives. This book begins with God speaking a perfect universe into existence. This book tells of God creating our first parents, Adam and Eve, and the mistake they made in disregarding God's instructions. Their choice introduced them to the knowledge of good and evil something they lived to fully regret. This knowledge was the very thing God wanted to protect them from. God most high, we recognize that it is our duty to be a blessing to others by our positive influence. Help us always to be on the alert for opportunities to bless others with our influence and means. Give us the wisdom, power, and skill to help raise the unconscious and conscious thoughts and affections of those with whom we come in contact. In Jesus' name, amen. Our key text is Hebrews 11.8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. It's war time. Shortly after God gives Abram the promised land, war breaks out. Genesis 14, 1 and 2. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Aruch, king of El Lassar, Chadlamir, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that they made war with Barah, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gamara, Shinab, king of Ad Adma, Shemeber, king of Zaboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zor. This is the first war recorded in Bible history. It was composed of the coalition of four armies in Mesopotamia and Persia against a coalition of five Canaanite armies, including the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 14, seven through nine. Then they turned back and came to En Meshpat, that is Kadesh, and attacked all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwelt in had Ezon, Tamar, and the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Atma, the king of Zoboim, the king of Bela, that is Zor, went out and joined together in battle in the valley of, valley of Sidon against Chadlamor, king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elassar, four kings against Five. This was a really big fight. Why were they fighting? This military operation formed because the Canaanite people rebelled against the Babylonian superpowers. Genesis 14, 4 through 6. Twelve years they served Chattelmore, 
and in the 13th year, they rebelled. In the 14th year, Tadlamir and the king that was with him came and attacked Raphaim in Ashtaroth. Karnam, the Zuim in Ham, and the Em in Shava Karathaim, and the Horites in the their mountain of Seir, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. The Canaanites were fighting against the control of the kings of Mesopotamia and Persia, which came from Babylon. Although this is a biblical record of an historical event that refers to the specific timing of a world war, it also has spiritual significance. This war occurs just after God gives Abram the gift of the promised land. The involvement of so many people from the country of Canaan suggests that the issue at stake in this conflict is who would have control over the land. This war was about who owned and controlled the land. The funny thing is that the people who fought for control of the land do not even own the land. The real owner of the land is Abram, the camp of Abram, the truly interested party, who is the true owner of the land, is the only force that remains outside the conflict at least at first. At first, Abram does not join the fight. Why is that? Abram remains neutral because the promised land was not obtained through the force of arms or through the wisdom of political strategies. Abram's kingdom was a gift from God. Then why does Abraham join the war? It's because Lot, his nephew, in the course of the battle, Lot was taken prisoner by the army from Babylonia, Genesis 14, 10 through 17. Now the valley of Sidim was full of asphalt pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled. Some fell there, and the remainder fled to the mountains. Then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot, Abram's brother's son who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the Terebeth tree of memory, the Amorite brother of Ashkol and the brother of Anar, and they were allied with Abram. Now, when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night and he and his servants attacked them and pursued sued them as far as Heba, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shava, that is the king's valley, after his return from the defeat of Chadlamir, the kings who were with him. Here is what Patriarchs and Prophets says about this incident. Abraham, dwelling in peace in the oak groves at Mamre, learned from one of the fugitives the story of the battle and the calamity that had fallen or befallen his nephew. He had cherished no unkind memory of Lot's ingratitude. All his affections for him was awakened and he determined that he should be rescued. Seeking for his all divine counsels, Abram prepared for war. His attack so vig vigorous and unexpected resulted in speedy victory. The king of Elam was slain and his panic-stricken forces were utterly rooted. Lot and his family with all the prisoners and their goods were recovered and a rich booty fell into the hands of the victors. 
to Abraham under God, the triumph was due. The worshiper of Jehovah had not only rendered a great service to the country, but had proved himself a man of the law. It was seen that righteous is not cowardice and that Abram's religion made him courageous in maintaining the right and defending the oppressed. His heroic act gave him a widespread influence among the surrounding tribes. The point here is that Abram does not fight the whole army coalition. He attacks only the camp where Lot is held, held prisoner. Abram saves Lot and the king of Sodom. Abram shows courage and strength. For sure, the fame of Abram grows in the land. People hear the news about how Abram saves the king. Abram's influence in the region grew and the people saw the kind of man he was and learned something more of the God that he served. Abram's actions is a sure reminder that our actions have a strong influence on others. Hence, as people of God, we must be very careful about the type of message we send by our actions. Abram is victorious in his battle. He rescues his nephew Lot and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's time for rejoicing and celebration. How does Abraham respond to this victory? Does he take credit for the victory? Find out in part six, Abram gives Melchizedek one ten.